Good morning. Well, maybe afternoon, evening, whenever you're listening to it. Welcome, everybody. This is Whistlekick Martial Arts Radio, episode 563. And today, Andrew and I are talking about how fights are actually a failure of communication. What does that mean? Well, we're going to get into it and stick around. But first, <laughs> who am I? I'm Jeremy Lesniak. I'm your host for the show, co-host for the show. I guess I should I should point out that Andrew is also part of the show. And I'm realizing that in the video, I'm I'm blocking him out. And there we go. Now, now we've got him. So if you want to see the video <laughs> version of this episode, you can go to YouTube. You can find it over there. You can find all the episodes that we do on YouTube at whistlekickmartialartsradio.com. They're all over the place. But if you want to see everything that we're doing beyond the podcast, all the projects, the products that we make, everything that we're doing to support you, the traditional martial artist, go to whistlekick.com. You'll find a bunch of stuff over there. And if you find something you like in the store, use the code PODCAST15. It's going to get you 15% off. It's going to let us know, hey, that was a podcast listener that made that purchase. And it helps us justify the money and the time that we put into this show. All right. Uh, what else is on my list? See, I've got a list. I've got paper. This is the downside to video. You see me do all this stuff. Uh, we bring you two episodes a week. And if you like them, if you think they're worthwhile, if they're worth your time, and if you're watching or listening, they probably are. You've got some ways you can support us. Like I said, you could buy something in the store. You could also share an episode with somebody. You could follow us on social media and share that stuff around. You could buy a book. You could leave a review. Or you could help out with the Patreon. P-A-T-R-E-O-N dot com slash whistlekick. And guess what? If you support us on the Patreon, we're going to give you more stuff. Just today, I uploaded another chapter of the book I'm working on for the people at a certain tier. Like there's a bunch of stuff going on. We're, we're just throwing more and more at the Patreon. I've got other things that I got to put up this week because, hey, if you're going to contribute, we're going to give you back even more. It's all about value exchange. And now let's talk about the episode. So the subject here, Andrew, I, I don't remember where it, where it came from, but it was something I said or wrote or thought about an episode. Where, where did the impetus for this arise? I'm not sure you had sent me some, just some okay. thoughts on communication and you know, that I think the quote was a fight occurs when communication yeah. breaks down. And that was it. I mean, it just, that was kind of the lead in like, Oh, that's a, that's an interesting thing to think about and yeah. to talk about. Yeah. And, and I think, I think it's true. I think it's true in almost every case and actually viewers or listeners, whatever you are, uh, Andrew and I were talking about whether or not it should be all fights or the result of a failure of communication, or is it just most? And I think I can make a case for for all, but instead of being absolutist about this, we'll we'll be a little more we'll be a little softer about it and say that in general, fights are a breakdown in communication. Now, when I sent you that, I, th I think you had said, "Oh, I really like that." What was it about what the the gist of the idea that you thought it would make a good episode? Well, as as you know, Jeremy, my wife likes to say that I'm a fan of OCC, which is the open, clear communication. Uh, and so thinking about why do fights mm. occur and could they be resolved if there had been a discussion ahead of time or work resolving some sort of, of, of issue, yeah. um, could that be done through communication? And I would make the argument that in most cases, you probably could. I think so. You know, when I think about the the quintessential examples of fights, you know, when fights occur, it's somebody's upset at somebody else. Well, yep. uh, most of the time when somebody's upset, it's because there was a communication breakdown. Most people aren't bad people. Most people are trying to be good. They're trying to do the, the, the right thing. And... Usually when someone takes a negative action, you know, some kind of destructive action directed at someone else, it's because they feel like that person wronged them, right? I don't hear too many stories where people say, you know, I just decided to be a jerk. You know, they felt entitled for some reason, or they felt like they were reciprocating on something. There's something that happens where they say, you know, this is the next logical step. And so the fight becomes the logical step after a series of communication breakdowns. Yeah, absolutely. And I think this is, this occurs in in literal fights. You know, I punch you, you punch me. Hopefully you try to punch me, I block it, and then I punch you, and then we're done. That That's hopefully how the fight goes. <laughs> um, and I don't mean you personally, Andrew. I just mean in general. <laughs> but 
you know, we use the word fight to, to describe an argument as well. And I had this saying back uh, when I had my last company, when I had the IT company, that all problems are the result of a, a communication breakdown. When I thought about every time something went wrong with a client, it was because there was some communication failure. They wanted something that we didn't deliver because we, we missed, right? They thought they were being clear. Nobody ever says, I want you to do this and intentionally says it in a vague way, right? They think mm -hmm. they're being clear. They think they have open, clear communication. But then what you receive is different than what they said. What you hear or what you interpret is different than what they said. And so we might deliver something. Maybe we, we resolve a problem or make a change to a website or a computer or whatever it was. And this was what I asked for. Yes, it is. And now there's an argument. Exactly. And this is where I, I spent a tremendous amount of time running that organization focused on communication. And for those of you who are saying, Jeremy, you're, you're really off in the weeds here. Don't worry. It's going to come back. We're going to pull it back. We had a lot of forms. And it, we had this joke in the office that every form there was the result of a problem that arose. And customers would just get so confused. You know, why do I have to fill out all this paperwork to, to do this thing or to, to trade in my computer or whatever it was? Well, because there was a problem prior. You go to buy a car, how many pieces of paper are you filling out? You buy a house, how many pieces of paper are you filling out? Every single one of those is to enforce clear communication. So you you have no choice but to communicate clearly. Now, if you don't read it and you don't know what it says, that, that's a whole different issue. But at least all sides are agreeing on what's happening. There is, there is paperwork that's involved. Have you ever been in a situation where... Uh, professional communication went awry and people got mad? I, I think anybody who's spent any time in the workplace would be able to, to agree. Yes, absolutely. That, that happens all yeah. the time. And nine times out of 10, if you can just take a step back, figure out what the actual issue was, what is it you don't understand? Like uh, if a boss came to me or a, uh, uh, a supervisor came to me and said they want to get this, this, this done, but I don't truly understand it. But I say, okay, great. And then I go away, not fully understanding what they actually wanted. Then I do the job and I do it incorrectly because I didn't understand exactly what they wanted. There was definitely a communication problem there. And that is now going to cause friction because my supervisor is going to say, uh, that's not what I wanted. But I wasn't able to stand up and say, I don't understand. Can you communicate to me better exactly what you need? Yeah. And I think that this is why people underestimate the importance of communication. And it's something that when I, when I think about what goes on in the martial arts schools I've been part of, communication is not something that's ever been a priority. And nope. at least not explicitly. I've never heard an instructor say, you know what? If you're looking to coexist well with people and avoid fights, you want to make sure you have clear communication. You want to make sure that you're being understandable as to what you say, because really that, that's the end of the day. Why did we develop language? Because we needed to express ideas. And the better you are at expressing ideas, the better everything else goes in your life. You know, if, if you look at the people at the top of whatever industry, they might not be the absolute best at communicating, but they're not bad at it. There, there's a certain standard that you have to reach in terms of communication in order to keep things moving on track. When you and I speak, you know, we, we actually just had something on Friday where I said, you know, let's make sure that moving forward, we do this for better communication. So when we record these episodes, they are, they're better, right? We're, even mm -hmm. though, you know, we're friends, we've had plenty of time communicating and yet we're still looking at how do we improve that communication because it, it's the root of everything that we're doing. Absolutely. Now, when I think about fights that have gone wrong or, or that have existed, because a fight is, is at least the premise of this episode, a fight is communication gone wrong. I think about the different circumstances under which there's a fight. You know, um, somebody bumps into somebody in a bar, right? That, that's, that's about as cliche as we get in our martial arts world and, and talking about scenarios. You know, we, we talk about bar fights so often because they're probably the best example of something going zero to 60, you know, happening right out of nowhere because alcohol is yep. involved. And yet 
don't know about you. I've managed to avoid every bar fight that's ever started to pop up around me. And it's been with communication. Yep. I can, I mean, I can, I can say with pride that um, I've never really been in a fight and I, I, I generally take pride in that. Like there are some martial arts instructors that I have heard of. I don't know them personally, but they're like, I've, I've been in tons of fights and I always win. And that's why I'm really good instructor. Cause you know, my martial arts is really good. It's like, well, I, I think you lost. <laughs> like, if it, the, the the minute you get into a fight, it's a bad thing. I mean, I was in fights when I was in, you know, I was in some fights and scuffles when I was in high school. But you know, prior re, it was really prior to me being uh, mm. in martial arts. You know, since seriously training, I've never really been in a fight, and I think that's the way it should be. And, and, and I think that that's that's the victory. You know, I've had people ask me, you know, can you can you teach me to fight or teach me how to protect myself? And I said, you know. I can, I'm not the best at it, but what I can teach you very well is how to knock it into a fight because that's something yep. that I can say I've managed to do. Now let's remember I'm short. I'm nerdy. Uh, didn't have a lot of friends growing up, got picked on constantly. And I can remember, I mean, if I sat down and really thought about it, I could probably come up with dozens of situations that I managed to get myself out of, to talk myself out of, to walk away from, and I never let any of them get get out from from never let them get away from me. And it's something I'm really proud of. And it's something I, I think I wrote down in the notes that I sent you. I think the, that's the only way to win a fight is to avoid it. Because if 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 you and I, if we have some communication breakdown and it turns physical, only one of us can win. Well, and you could make the argument that no one wins mm. because uh, let's say we do get into a fight. And I'm I'm not even going to say who's going to win. One one Doesn't of matter. us knocks the other right. one out. None, none of us. One right. of us knocks the other one out. Well, the one that got knocked out could theoretically press yep. charges, and you, you know, maybe uh, th they got hurt really bad, and they press charges, and that person, the other person, ends up spending some time in jail. Did did you really win? Right. Like I, right. I, I would make the argument. Uh, no, right. you didn't. And, and you know, just to go down that road a, a moment. People like to make a, a big deal about laws and say, well, you know, the, the law would be on your side. Sure. But uh, you can sue someone without cause. I could sue you right mm -hmm. now for anything. The judge will probably dismiss it if it doesn't have grounds. But if I hire some lawyer, you're probably going to need to hire a lawyer. And now we're both out money. So nobody loses there, right? Yep. It almost doesn't matter what the circumstances is, are. It almost doesn't matter what the root cause is, right? It's something happens. We're not on the same page. And we've resorted to physical violence because that's all that's left. Yep. And and it leads greatly, greatly leads it leads into a great discussion, which maybe will be for another episode. But in my opinion, one of the most undertaught skills in a dojo or a dojang or any mm -hmm. any school on how to avoid a fight is how to de-escalate a situation, you know, um, which is not done with your fists. You know, de-escalating is completely done with body language and with your voice and learning how to do that, you know, oh, we you talked a second ago about bar fights, right? That's I, I don't I'm not going to go so far as to say most fights happen in, in bars, but it's I'm sure there's, there's a, a fair number I that say. do. Yeah, and the fact that alcohol is involved mm -hmm. that slows people's reaction mm -hmm. times, and they're they're quicker to make judgments, and you know, uh, and if you can learn how to use body language to de-escalate the situation and show that you're not threatening. Maybe your hands are open and in front of you, you know, not asking, um, you know, not asking simple yes, no questions like, Hey, you know, if someone's coming at you, asking them questions like uh, open-ended questions like, Oh, I'm, I'm, you know, what can I do to resolve this? Like, you know, what, what's the problem? Mm -hmm. You know, what can we figure out? Oh, you know, open hands, palm up, like, Hey, I'm really sorry. You know, things like that is rarely taught in, martial arts schools and that's the sort of thing that can help you get out of sticky situations and i think it's important to point that out one of the things that is critical in any kind of de-escalation is having enough confidence 
and and an intact ego, humility, right? If you if you bump into me, you know, at a bar, you know, I spill my drink, and now there's there's beer down the front of my shirt. I can look at that in two ways. Oh man, I lost some beer. Or this man has assaulted me, caused yep. me to lose a, a certain value uh, in something that I've paid for, and he needs to provide restitution. And if he is not willing to do that, then I'm going to take a pound of flesh. Right? Like that, that's yep. really those are the two sides of that. Now, if I'm if my ego's intact, if I'm willing to say, you know what? <laughs> this happens. This person did not single me out and say, you know, I'm going to go bump into you, which uh, beer wasn't involved, but that was literally one of the things that could have become a fight that I just let go. Uh, I was in high school and I just chalk it up to it was an accident. Exactly. There was not an intentional because can remember communication is more than words. Communication is physical body language, right? Body language, physical communication. Your communication mm -hmm. in that scenario was not, I am going to intentionally aggress on Jeremy and bump him and make his life sad by spilling some of his drink. That, that mm -hmm. wasn't the intent. And so reading that, understanding that communication, the intent behind it becomes critical. So do we have anything to pile on to this problem before we start talking about the solutions? No, I mean, I think it's it's just a matter of thinking scenarios where there w where it would happen you know let let's see i'm i'm at a i'm at a restaurant or a bar with my wife and the the phone rings and i i need to take the call and i go outside and i'm i'm on the phone and J joe schmo walks in sees a very attractive woman sitting at the bar all alone they walk up start hitting on her cuz they don't necessarily know that she's that she's married and her husband's out back i mean you can make the argument that she would theoretically be wearing a ring but let let's say it's my sure. girlfriend right so then i walk in the bar done my phone call see this guy hitting on my wife well i'm going to beat him up well the communication would be the gentleman's like, I didn't know. Like, I'm I'm sorry. Like, if there had been some communication, you could have worked that out or, and resolved it. Or what if he did know? What if he what if he knew? Because unfortunately, not everyone is faithful. And, not fair. And you could take it as a compliment. Yeah. If you if your ego is intact and you have a strong relationship, then that person hitting on your your partner or spouse, you know person you're interested in or on a date with it is a compliment to your taste yep absolutely and that's how i've always taken it maybe not always that's how i try to take it if i if i'm out with a woman <laughs> and, and she gets hit on one of two things happen she gives that person attention that is inappropriate for the fact that we're out there together and i know hey i'm done spending time with her or well, and then there's then there needs to be communication between the two of you, or yeah. she, you know, pushes the guy off and says, "Hey, I'm good," and I have that much more trust in her, which is a component of communication, or at least related, and I don't need to worry about it. So how do we how do we within the martial arts context? Because we we've been kind of loose with what we're defining as as martial arts as we've been talking about communication today. Within that realm, you know, let's say within a school, how do we teach communication such that we can reduce the chances of getting into a fight? That's a very good question. Because it's very, it's, it's a difficult thing to teach mm -hmm. in, in a classroom setting, um, you know, how, how to avoid a fight. You know, which is ultimately, I think, what, what uh, that's the way you win, right? I mean, quote unquote, win is to not get in the fight at all. So, you know, teaching that, you know, there there are some ways to help avoid it. I, I think confidence makes it a little easier. You know, having having the self confidence to to recognize where things are at and where you are at, I think, can help mm -hmm. quite a bit. Um, and I think just being in martial arts helps that to, to a certain degree. Agree. For sure. I think that we're, we're talking about communication in two ways. We're talking about de-escalation is the word you used earlier. And we've done an episode on that, how, how to avoid fights or something like that. It goes way back and it includes, you know, uh, I, I think you, I gave you my um, 
And I think we referenced this in a recent episode too. I think it's like a five stage de-escalation protocol that, you know, being humble, being funny, um, being gross, being crazy, you know, th- th- I forget what the fifth one was. Maybe it was only four. I don't know. But those strategies are out there. I'm not, I'm not the first one to develop those. Plenty of people know those, you know, the idea of, you know, just off the, right off the cuff, you know, somebody wants to fight, you know, just start picking your nose. It's, it's gross and weird. And, and it's probably going to make people go, ah, I'm out. This is not what I signed up for. But there's also the, the verbal side of it. And there, I think the best way is to run people through scenarios. People aren't always good at developing their own strategies. That's why they come to martial arts. If they were, mm-hmm. you could say, all right, you've got, you've got two hands and two feet and elbows and knees and a forehead and go figure out how to do karate. Well, it's not how it works. How do people <laughs> learn martial arts? They mimic what we show them. So the same could apply to communication as it relates to de-escalation and avoiding fights, running them through scenarios, getting people to act it out. If I would guarantee that for most people, if, if we get a scenario going and we have a, a, a mock setup, and, and, and this, this could be a, a, a very reasonable scenario that you could run in an adult class. You know, pretend we're at a bar, you know, line up some chairs and Mm -hmm. I walk up to you and I start speaking to you aggressively and I shove you. It doesn't matter how good of friends we are and how much time we've had training. There's going to be some element of you that's going to come up. You're going to have some adrenaline come up because there's a primal aspect to the tone of my voice and the physical touch that's going to make you on some level want to respond. Now, if it's, if it's minor, you don't respond, but to start playing those out and realize, Hey, we can model this behavior. We can demonstrate examples and give people Mm -hmm. tools. I think it's incredibly valuable and something that should be happening more. Absolutely. And, and you'll never hit every single reason why a fight may occur, but getting the mind, the gears turning and, and running through a handful of scenarios and just thinking about what you might be able to do. You know, uh, I mean, one of the things we, we taught, we wrote down in our notes as well was, um, you know, a, you know, a joke of how to avoid a fight would be to show a move, like showing some sort of move and then walking mm-hmm. away, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Here's my best move. I'm going to turn and I'm going to walk away. Exactly. And I think it's important for for those of you who own schools who are seen as as positive role models aspects of the community etc i want you to recognize that the messaging on this in media is actually shifting the other way we are seeing more and more um media attention given to celebrities attempting to handle their differences via violence and the, the best example I can give to show you of how this is starting to go wrong is just a couple weeks ago. And, you know, we don't, you don't usually uh, date these episodes. We're recording it on December 8th, 2020. Uh, there was an exhibition match between Mike Tyson and Roy Jones Jr. But in the undercard, there was a YouTube celebrity and a retired NBA player who went at it. Okay. And why did they ultimately do this? Because it made both of them money. Okay. But you know what came out of that? The YouTube celebrity, Logan Paul, now has a fight scheduled with Floyd Mayweather because he was talking some smack. Now, again, ultimately, this comes down to they're both going to make some money on it. Great. Mm -hmm. But what is the messaging that's being put forth in the media? A challenge was issued. A uh, egotistical position was put forward that was honored in, by the media. It was it was it was seen as worthwhile enough that it became a big news story. And then Floyd Mayweather accepted the fight. Snoop Dogg is starting his own boxing 
promotion. We're going to see more and more of this <laughs> because Joe Blow doesn't bring in the views. Celebrities do. So what yep. a lot of us are going to start seeing, especially children, is that the way you settle differences is with fighting. The UFC, unfortunately, has been leaning into this. And because those are real fights, and not to take anything away from professional wrestling, but most of us know that the storylines, the, the, the physicality is amazing. Storylines yep. are fabricated most of the time. There are some elements of truth that sometimes string through that the, the writers will lean into. I know a little bit about that industry. But if you're not careful, if we are not careful, we're going to see more and more fighting on television, online, and we're going to see it validating the exact opposite of what we're talking about here today. And if you are in a position to push back against that by teaching de-escalation, by teaching these strategies, these techniques, this importance of communication, you're in a position to help. Yep. And I think a lot of it stems from a willingness to to seem, or not a willingness, uh, uh, a want to seem tough, right? I'm, I'm a tough man, but that, you know, the the willingness to not seem tough, that, that gets a way easier with age. It, it does. It absolutely sure. does. Absolutely. And I think we have something in the notes there. Yeah, and I just want to kind of tie this up. We talk about the only way you win a fight is to avoid it. And if you if you resist that idea, I want you to think about something. If you hear about someone that's been in a bunch of fights, do you not automatically think that there's something wrong with that person? I think we all do. If you are constantly getting into fights or frequently getting into fights, there's some aspect of that person's personality that we tend to think, hmm, there's something missing. They, they, what, what is it about them that they permit this to happen? So there's, there's your proof. Anything so you got to add? No, I, th I think that's absolutely right. true. Great. So that's where we are with that. If you if you want more on this, if you want if you want to give us some feedback, we'd love to hear it. Email me, Jeremy at whistlekick.com. If you want to check out the episode, go to whistlekickmartialartsradio.com. We've got transcripts. We got links. Uh, I already put a date on this, so I'll, I'll I'll say this again. Yes, we've had some problems with the website. Yes, we're working through them. In fact, we took a big step forward just before we recorded. I was talking with Andrew about it. Uh, we, we should be good to go. In fact, maybe by the time uh, you check out this episode, maybe by the time you're watching or listening to this, that website should be fixed. Knock on wood. Here, I got some. My my desk is compressed wood. We'll knock on that. <laughs> Andrew's doggy on his head. If you want to help support the show and, and our mission here at Whistlekick, which is to connect, educate, and entertain traditional martial artists throughout the world, you can make a purchase. You could share an episode. You could support the Patreon, buy a book, leave a review. You got a ton of ways you can do that. Our social media is at Whistlekick. And I think that's it for today. So, Andrew, let's, let's send them out together. Until next time, train hard, train hard smile, smile, and have a great and have day. Have a great day.